Hi, I'm Dawn and this is where Shabby Meets Bling. Today is What Would You Make? And I absolutely love these projects. I'm calling today's project Post Season 7th Inning Stretch. Baseball fans, you know what I mean. I'd like to take a moment to thank our guest host, May, of Craft Away with May, and our hosts, Connie of Art with Connie and Brenda of Rustic and Lace DIY. You're going to find the links to their channels in this playlist of What Would You Make in the description box below. Well, my wood project begins with this cabinet, this old, uh, and I'm assuming it was like a medicine cabinet that someone made. Uh, very 1980s-ish. I only bought it for that metal insert. And I I figured I'd do something with the rest of it, right? But the metal insert, and it was only five bucks. So first thrifted wood item here. Then this baseball bat. Yes, I picked up this baseball bat for nothing. And I knew at some point in time I would do something with it. And this scrap plywood, I may or may not use the frame. Step one, step one, disassemble. Disassemble, Stephanie. Yes, uh, gotta get the door off because all I'm using for this project is the door. So I need to get it off the cabinet and it's the straight screws, which I absolutely hate. And I shouldn't say hate about anything. I dislike these things immensely because they're a pain in the booty. So gotta get all of uh, my hinges unhinged. <laughs> And then I need to get uh, a beautiful metal piece out of there, which I will be saving. That is the reason I bought this and the rest of the hardware. And then we're ready for step two. My guess is that this thing probably originally had glass in it and maybe it broke. And then someone replaced it with that metal piece because boy, oh boy, I'm telling you, a professional would not have used the glue and the amount of glue that this person did, whoever did this. So uh, I need to scrape the heck out of this thing to get at least somewhat down to the wood itself. I will be using this scrap and this thing, by the way, came out of my neighbor's dumpster as they were doing construction, but I did get the okay first. So if you're gonna go poke it around in someone's dumpsters, just ask permission. <laughs> it's the polite thing to do. I will be using this piece to create kind of a shadow box out of this frame. So I need to picture frame, I need to 45 my corners. And once I have my one, two, three, four pieces cut, I'm gonna go back and blades with after blade, just ever so slightly trim them down so they, they create an absolutely perfect picture frame for my shadow box. Before I get our shadow box actually constructed, I need to go back to our baseball bat. This baseball bat is getting a, a redo. <laughs> She's getting a makeover. First, I have totally taken her and cut her in half. She needed to be cut in half, so I had her cut in half. Next, I'm going to take the frame before I glue anything to it, because I need to do a, use it for reference for a couple things. I'm taking my bat and I'm going to use it as a decorative part of the frame. I'm going to take each side and I am going to 45 the top of each half of the bat and the bottom halves of the bat to partially frame out this wood frame. So here's my, my newly improved or totally destroyed bat. And I'm telling you, if you've ever tried to cut anything that is not perfectly square, it is really difficult. And because this bat was round, it did not cut in half, absolutely perfectly symmetrical. So uh, it wasn't super easy to get the rest of it 45 perfect. So I am taking my sander and I have to sand down some of the inside of the flat part of the bat and near the edge to actually get my 45s to meet. But I did it. It's not perfect, but I think it looks really, really good. So 
I need to step back and understand <laughs> that this is a situation that I have limited control over. That's hard for me, guys. It's hard. Now it's time to assemble the shadow box part of this project. I am going to wood glue and clamp this into place because it is on the back side and I'm going to use the brad nailer on the front side. I don't want any of my pieces to not be aligned because it'll totally, totally ruin the look of the shadow box if they are not aligned. So I am simply going to, first things first, just glue the bottoms of them into place, the part that's going to meet the frame, and I am going to clamp each and every piece perfectly in place before I brand nail. Now it's time uh, for the moment of truth. <laughs> I flip her over and then I'm going to make sure everything is in place and nothing got moved or askew in uh, the flip. And I'm going to use my brad nailer and start to attach everything. Once I have secured each side with a couple of brads, I will then remove my clamps, flip it over, and put the final, final nails into each side. Now we need a back for our shadow box. And you remember the, that old piece of plywood that I had? That's what I'm going to be using. So I am placing our backless <laughs> shadow box down and I'm just going to trace the exterior onto this plywood and then we are gonna cut it out. I am just using the jigsaw to do so and it makes quick work out of it. After I have my basic shape cut out, I am going to take my frame of the shadow box and I'm going to clamp it together because I'm going to make sure this thing is really precise. I am going to use the sander, once clamped, to sand down any little imperfections that the jigsaw may have left. Once I have the back totally sanded, smooth, and I will mark these so I know which side goes where because I'm not attaching it yet because I want to be able to paint the inside of the shadow box prior to assembly. And once this is done, I'm going to flip it over again and I am going to sand the front of our shadow box. It's absolutely fabulous working outside on gorgeous fall days, but at some point you gotta take the project inside because it gets dark and it's getting dark. <laughs> I am going to paint the inside of our shadow box. And you might not see much of this, but it needs something. And I don't know why I, I felt the need there to get the outside that was totally not necessary. <laughs> I needed the rim, the edge, just in case it was visible, but nothing more. But I am painting the inside of this, this pretty, pretty green. And it's this green for a reason because of something that is going to go on the back of our beautiful shadow box. I am putting the back on here just for a second because I need to trace out where our next element is going to go and I can't have it interfering with the assemblage of the back onto the shadow box. So it just needs to be contained in this little area in this field, shall we say. <laughs> we need to contain the next element on the field. Introducing our next element. It is grass. Not real grass, it's artificial turf. But we are going to put grass on the field. <laughs> How appropriate. This is a baseball themed project after all. So I am trying to figure out exactly which way my grass is growing. If you've ever messed with artificial turf, you know what I mean. So I need it all to be going in the same direction, all the green, shall we say. And then I am going to use duct tape to temporarily get it all uh, put together. Once I have my pieces put together, that's gonna be a big enough chunk 
to go in that area that we designated is going to be the field, I will then cut out that square and I am going to hot glue it, just hot glue it onto the back of our shadow box. Now it's time to paint the exterior. Let's paint the exterior. Yes, and I am using a satin black. So it'll have just a teeny bit of a sheen, not much, but just a little something, something. Because you remember, this is where our baseball bat is going to be applied to. So I am giving this a nice coat on the top and then on the sides. And then we are going to assemble. Here's what we look like assembled. I do still need to give it a second coat and paint the back. But as you can see, I have screwed it into place. I did pilot holes first and then screwed it into place and I added two eye hooks so we can hang this on the wall. Now it's time to show you the inspiration for this entire project. I picked up this vintage baseball glove at my very, very, very favorite resale shop and she's worth some money, evidently. And as we all know, I don't care about stuff like that. It is just really, really cool. I paid $4 for it and you can actually pick these things up on eBay um, for a few bucks. And I am going to add this to our shadow box. I am not gonna harm this. There will be no harming of gloves in the making of this video, I promise. <laughs> I will also be using this thrifted finial. It's solid wood, I got it for a quarter. And once again, if you see wood stuff, buy it. You never know. And I will also be using the baseball only, the wiffle ball only from this wiffle ball set that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I will be using a red chalk paint to paint the laces. And only the laces. That's all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint out what you're going to be able to see because this is going to be in the middle of our baseball glove. A real baseball is too heavy and I did not want to harm the glove as I said in any way so it's simply going to be holding a wiffle ball made to look like a real authentic baseball. Our baseball bat is wood glued to the frame. The grass is growing on the field. We've got our glove and ball mounted. Let's play ball. So here's our finial and our baseball bat all mounted. Not bad, huh? Not bad, 45. It was not easy. That was probably the most difficult part of this entire project, was getting that baseball bat where the 45s met. But other than that, I mean, this project is so simple and so easy. You could use a purchased shadow box, pick up a little artificial turf, a baseball, a baseball glove, and you're in business. Easy project. And that finial comes in handy. You can hang a jersey there, or your favorite baseball cap, or your purse. <laughs> whatever, whatever makes you happy. And mount these in a sports room, a kid's room, anybody that loves baseball. And what a great Christmas gift. Leave that finial bare. It looks like a baseball. It's just a nice little something there to take up that space. And oh yes, of course, I lit, I lit it up. My motto is, if you can light it up, you should light it up. <laughs> and I lit up the little wiffle ball. And the glove is just hanging there, really with wires, so that it's not harmed in any way. The baseball is very lightweight. And I used a little strand of lights, battery operated, from the Dollar Tree. You can just reach inside and flick the switch and it turns off. You could hardwire it if you wanted, but I like it just the way it is. Thanks again to May, Connie, and Brenda for hosting and co-hosting this month's What Would You Make? Make sure to check out the description box for the links to their channels and this playlist. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. Share it with your family, your friends, anyone that loves decor and baseball and our sports enthusiasts. You can follow me on Instagram and make sure to check out my shop on Etsy 
a lot of fun things there to craft with. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed the content, you can show your support of the channel by subscribing. So don't forget to subscribe. But for now, this is Dawn with Shabby Meets Bling. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.